Good morning. Mommy. Ah, only Ava greets back. What happened to everybody else? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, there you go. That's better. Hello, Ava. How are you? Hi. 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 <laughs> She's still chewing. Okay, we'll bring up Ava here some other time. Okay, today's September 16, Wednesday, September 16, 2020, Wednesday morning. Okay, in the gospel today comes from St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 31 to 35. Now, this is, this is a very interesting kind of gospel because uh, it's, not, it's not an easy uh, gospel account to understand. Okay, So, I need you to pay close attention to the way we're going to uh, try to understand this gospel today. So, let me read it out to you. Jesus said to the crowds, to what shall I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They're like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not weep. And then Jesus follows it up by saying, For John the Baptist came neither eating food nor drinking wine, and you said he is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you said, Look, he's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by all her children. What does that exactly mean? Right? Wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Okay, well, there, there are two parts to this, or maybe even three parts that we, we need to, uh, to reconcile and put together. For the first part is Jesus is telling uh, the crowds, you know, you're like little kids who, uh, who try and uh, lure their playmates to do certain things with them, and they easily get tired of it, right? And they go shift and do other things. Their, uh, their attention span is so limited that uh, they, they tend to shift from one thing to another. Um, we can take this to mean that our Lord was criticizing uh, the, the, the crowds or the people's lack of um, patience and understanding and that uh, they... they, they they, they're never satisfied, that sort of thing, right? They, they're never content with what they have. They're, they never get content. And on top of that, on top of their uh, lack of contentment, they're also very critical of people. They're very critical of people. And um, they say, oh, John the Baptist, okay, he was neither eating nor drinking wine, you know, and he ate very little. Yet, uh, for all his virtue, for all his uh, life of sacrifice, people accuse him of being possessed by a demon. Right? So here's a guy, John the Baptist is already, you know, living a very austere, virtuous life. And yet, people call him names. They said he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, meaning himself, Jesus, um, did quite the opposite and, uh, and, and uh, you know, was living a more normal kind of life and he was friends to everybody, including sinners, right? And, uh, and he uh, joined people in their feasts and in their celebrations, the wedding feast at Cana, okay, and other uh, celebrations of people. So he ate and drank with them because he mingled with them. Quite the opposite of what John the Baptist was doing. And yet, and yet, <laughs> he gets criticized and, 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 and is said to be, oh, you're a friend of sinners. And when they say you're a friend of sinners, it's like, you know, birds of a feather flock together, right? 
you're also a sinner yourself. So people are never satisfied. <laughs> They're so... Uh, 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 they, they, they hardly get content and satisfied with, with, uh, with things they encounter in life. Why is that? Why is that? Why are people um, like that? They, 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 up to now, people are like that. I mean, we, we hardly get contented with what we have. And, and because we hardly are content with what we have, we tend to be very critical of other people. We tend to be critical and negative and pessimistic about people and events. Right? Uh, and you notice this every day. When somebody, just as an example, when somebody tries to, to say something good about somebody, almost immediately somebody, uh, anybody else listening to you will, will bring up something negative about that person. Right? Or you're trying to propose a good idea. And this happens many times, you know, in families and even at work situations or in, in any other place where you have people gathering and somebody proposes a good idea. Inevitably, somebody will always come up and, and dose cold water over the enthusiasm around that idea and say all sorts of negative things without even yet understanding where that person is coming from or without even yet appreciating the entire presentation of the idea, somebody already becomes negative about it. Somebody already says, oh, that's not going to work. Oh, I don't think that can happen. Oh, I don't think so. Negative, negative, negative. Pessimism, pessimism, pessimism abounds everywhere, right? Not only during the time of our Lord. Perhaps up to now, you get plenty, plenty of these kinds of people who cannot seem to find anything good with other people or with events or with the things going on around them. Why? Why is that? Okay, I think we need to keep Ava a little more quiet because... Okay, why is that? Why are there so many negative people? Why are there so many people who cannot seem to be content with what they have and therefore become negative about everything else? Right? Why? The answer is found in the age-old wisdom. Wisdom. That's why our Lord talks about the very last sentence here. But wisdom is vindicated by all her children. What does that mean? Wisdom. What is the wisdom of the ages? What, what is the truth? Okay? Wisdom means abiding by the truth and ultimate understanding of the ultimate causes of things. That's what wisdom is. What is the age-old wisdom that we have, that the world has always known about people and events and the world around us? What is this wisdom that our Lord is talking about that will vindicate people? That wisdom is rooted in Genesis, which tells us that God created everything, right? You know, the, the, the narration of the seven days of creation. God created everything in the world, right? Everything that we have in this world is a handiwork of God. And what is the sentence, the, the sentence that comes after every day's creative work is done? Genesis says, And God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. What does that tell you? Everything that God created is good, was good, began as a good, and He gifted us, the world, 
and especially mankind with all of this good. That is the wisdom of the ages. Everything God made was good, including mankind. Including mankind, including man, people, you and I. God created us good. Of course, we were destroyed by original sin. And of course, uh, if we continue to be in the state of sin, even after our baptism, uh, then we commit actual sins. And well, then uh, uh, we are the only ones destroying the goodness that God has given us. Right? So the truth behind everything God made is the fact that every, God made everything to be good. So, this should be the starting point of the way that we read people and events and situations in our lives. The cure to pessimism, the cure to negativity is to switch the way we, are, we, we think about people and events and, and situations in life. We always have to start from the perspective that people are inherently good. That ideas that people generate are inherently good. There must be something good in everyone and in everything and in every situation. Even if they appear somewhat confusing in the aspect of good or that they may not appear good to us in the beginning. Right? But I think this is the wisdom that our Lord is talking about here. That in the end, if only we look at things from the perspective of goodness, then those people who do so, who do so, looking at things from the perspective of goodness, will be vindicated in their perspective of life. Right? That is why our Lord says the wis wisdom is vindicated by all her children. What is that wisdom? The wisdom that God created all things good. That's the wisdom and the truth behind everything God made. And the children of God, okay, the children who abide by the wisdom of God will be vindicated, will be, will be justified, will, be, uh, will, be, uh, uh, will realize that really, in the end, in the final analysis, if we only try to understand what is good in people, in events, in situations in life, then we will be better off. We will be better off. We will be, we will be living a life that is more optimistic. We will be living a life that is filled with cheerfulness. We will be living a life that's full of hope. We will be living a life that is more harmonious between and among people. And there will be less hate. There will be less disagreement. There will be less fighting in the world. And among our neighbors and among people we associate with. If only we learn to begin to look at everything that happens in our lives and everything about people from the perspective of good. Okay? From the perspective of good. So the first question we always have to ask ourselves is, in anything, whether it be about people that we interact with, or about ideas they propose, or about situations in life, the first thing we should ask ourselves, the default question we should ask ourselves is, what's good about this? What's good about this person? Uh-oh, God bless you. God bless you. What is good about this person? What is good about his, his or her ideas? What is good about what he is proposing? Let us first look for what is good before we bother about 
all the negative ideas that we entertain in our heads. Every time we have to listen to somebody's ideas or when we interact with people. You see, because of our tendency to sin, okay, because our souls are all, are all uh, destroyed by original sin and we, have, we retain the tendency to sin. Okay? Even if we have been baptized and cleansed from that original sin, we still retain the tendency to sin. And that tendency to sin leads us to be blinded. From seeing what is good. Okay? The real good behind people, events, and situations in life. We get blinded by our tendency to sin. And it is so easy to fall into the temptation of negativity. And, 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 and destroy right away the personalities of people. And, 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 and be negative about them. And pessimistic about what they're telling us. And they propose. And this and that. It's so easy. To be negative and pessimistic. It needs effort. To always see the good in people. And see the good in their ideas. And see the good in events that happen to us in our everyday lives. So we have to put an effort. And many times. Many times. You know. It's our own selfishness. And it's our own vanity. And it is our own greed that does not allow us to see the good in people and events and situations. Many times, what blinds us really towards appreciating the good in others is our own selfishness, our own self-centeredness. We only see ourselves all the time. We only want to look at things from our own perspective all the time. We want to always frame the world and events in the world from the perspective of I, me, myself. What is it in it for me? It is the way many people look at it. Rather than objectively trying to understand what's good about this idea? What's good about this person? What's good about all this situation happening to my life? Instead of us trying to look for the good, we always tend to ask, what is it in it for me? And that kind of selfishness, that kind of greed or vanity, does not lead us to any good. It leads us to be pessimistic. It leads us to be negative about everybody and everything. Okay? So I would encourage you, I would encourage you to change that mindset, change that frame of mind and, 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 and learn to now be a little bit more uh, 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 um, curious, really, putting the effort to try and understand what is good in this person, what is good in this situation, what is good in what is being suggested uh, before me. And if you have that kind of an orientation in life, there's no room for pessimism. There is no room for sadness or, or even uh, <laughs> discouragement. Right? Rather, life is going to be full of optimism. Life is going to be full of cheerfulness and joy and hope. And plenty of hope. And there'll be plenty of charity to go around too. Okay? If only... We begin from the age-old wisdom of looking at everything in life, from people to situations and events, from the perspective of the good. Because that's how God intended it to be from the very beginning. That's the wisdom of the ages. And that is what's going to vindicate all of God's children if we learn to look at things from the perspective of good. Okay. Okay. We're all good now. <laughs> okay. Let's say goodbye, Eva. You want to come up here and say goodbye to everybody? Bye. Bye. There is Eva. Did you understand anything today, Eva? Did you? You did? Very good. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day. 
Bye. You wave bye-bye. You wave bye-bye. Then you show them bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay.